No, I don't want to do this one. Hello everyone, Callan here. Welcome back to my channel. Ugh, there's no getting around it. I need to do every single episode. If you guys can't tell, this is my least favorite episode of the series. It's still got some pretty funny jokes in it, but overall this episode feels the most out of place out of all of them. Sometimes the characters feel, well, out of character, and overall I'm just not fond of it. But we'll get into that another time. Right now it's time for some hell of a boss flashbacks for episode 4. There are two gates in heaven. The first one opens up to show us a cute little cherub town made mostly of clouds, and there's also a secondary gate in the background that has eyes on it. The train that runs over a human has a cutesy face on it. Re reference to Thomas the Tank Engine? Men cave. There's a shark out of water here? <laughs> Scapegoat. The building in the background looks like a harp. Cherubs don't make money for their blessings, they just do it for free. Does this mean that heaven doesn't have a money system in place and everything is free? There's a sign in the background that says, Surround yourself with people who will lift you up, so ditch your loser friends who you can't use. Signed, God. God is a dick. Poor guy is probably doing all the paperwork by himself. For some reason, heaven commercials are playing in hell. Blitz apparently shoots TVs for fun? Betty Boop reference. Wally's adorable and no one can tell me otherwise. There's a drawing of RoboFizz getting eaten on the dry erase board. <sighs> For some reason, even though she knows how to deal with Moxie's anxiety in every other episode, Millie screams in Moxie's face for him not to panic, even though he's being perfectly calm. Better close up on the M Twins poster. Loopty is the first instance of a sinner that we see with a robotic body. Blitz sniffs his ass directly. There's also a drawing of Verasica being made to walk on the dry erase board. Shut up, dear furry. Pony mood board. Both Lyle and Loopty went into the age machine at the same time, which implies that they probably didn't trust each other enough to have one go first and the other go second. So they went in at the same time. You know, instead of testing the machine on the poor like they usually do. Somehow paramedics knew to come get them out of the machine even though no one had actually been called. For some reason, Blitz shows hesitation to go and kill someone. He's literally never shown hesitation before, and even though the logic he's using in this instance applies to every single other kill, why the sudden change of heart that we literally never see again? Moxie thinks Loopty wanting revenge on his partner is hot. That's kinda hot! Judging by the silly star tour Blitz and the gang are on, and the fact that Blitz is in clown garb, which isn't questioned, I'm willing to bet that this is taking place in Hollywood or downtown LA. Blitz's face makeup is both covering the white marks on his face and his forehead mark. So why didn't his clown makeup in episode two cover his forehead mark? Is it something he puts on every day or is it actually part of his skin? Free stock photos. Blitz is sad that his kitty sock flew away. Ah yes, just another instance of someone leaving him. Goodbye, kitty. Supposedly, the reason the cherubs are here to save Lyle is because there are people in heaven who benefited from his technical advances. But if they're in heaven, then they're dead, so they didn't benefit from his work. That man looked no older than 30 at the most in the flashback sequence. Just how many inventions did they come out with? Blitz's forehead marking his back. Looks like the animators were trying to make it look like it had been covered by the clown wig, but just a few seconds earlier, the clown wig was off and there was still no forehead mark. Blitz refuses to use the door. Commit die. These cherubs are trying to save someone who legitimately isn't a good person. If he experimented on the poor in the past, then he's most likely killed some of them accidentally or otherwise, and therefore is most likely going to wind up in hell anyway. Smells like he ain't been out of bed in months, even though he was literally only just made an old man hours ago. Did no one bathe him after he was taken to the hospital? He looks gross as shit. Cats costumes! Pretty sure this is a Broadway reference, as Moxie is a tuxedo cat like the magical Mr. Mistopheles, and Blitz seems to be dressed as Rum Tum Tugger. Bees! This face. The cherubs ram a fragile old man who they're trying to keep alive through a wall. Craft mine. Blitz literally rips Santa's face off. The Santa makes the gnome, ooh, meme sound. Ooh! This is a hold mood. Greatest joy of all. Mommy. Blitz and Moxie look amazing in dresses. Moxie is a Karen. Piss bottle! The opera singer gets crushed and killed, but then she continues singing even after her death. It's all starting to make sense. We're saving that shitty old man's life whether he wants it or not implies that the cherubs don't actually care about any of the people that they're saving. Marijuana horse! Millie immediately sticks up for Blitz. Blitz, for some reason, has nothing to say about Millie's cat fight or the fact that Moxie and Millie are quite literally banging while shooting during the fight, or at the very least feeling each other up as Millie's bra goes flying through the air along with Moxie's bow tie. Piano player really just said, fuck this shit, I'm out. She can open a portal to and from heaven on a whim. This means they probably have some sort of special license or were granted the ability to do so by heaven's higher-ups. Yeah, no, sorry. Cherubs are banished from heaven, which means they're now just on Earth, I guess? 
uh, disgusting baby crying. Blitz has this really weird anime protagonist moment. I don't really know what else to call it, but it feels super out of character for him. Thankfully, he reverts back pretty quickly. Moxie can't catch a break. Lyle still went to hell for experimenting on the poor, proving my point that even if the cherubs had saved him from hanging himself, he still would have gone to hell whenever he died. So, what even was the point of all of this? Wally! I swear he's the best thing in the whole damn episode. Thank god this is over. This episode isn't terrible, but it really is my least favorite. Other than introducing Cherub and cracking a couple of good jokes, this entire thing is... is honestly pointless? I don't know. We'll see if they come back later. I'll see you all in the next mess. Later, gators!